Hello and welcome to my Song of the Month video tutorial. I'm Laura from Meadowlark Violin and this month we're going to be doing Minuet Number no. 1 by J.S. Bach. This is a lovely piece for the violin and I know you're going to really enjoy playing through it. Now you can get the free sheet music for this song and there's a link in the description below for you to print it out and follow along. Now just so you know, this lesson is kind of a condensed version of my full expanded version on this song. And you can get the full complete version where I talk about bowings and musicality and a lot more details when you sign up for a free trial of my online membership. So a link will be in the description below for that as well. All right, let's start learning it. Let's talk about some different bowing techniques that you're going to need for minuet number one. Look at measure one and look at the second two quarter notes. Do you see how there's a curved line across both of them, but there's also two dots above each note? This is kind of like a slur and a staccato, but not. We call this a hooked bowing. And what that means is you're going to play those two Ds in the same up bow, but you're going to add a little bit of spacing in between to give them a little bit of separation. Now you could play it like this, where you absolutely stop the bow in between the two notes. Okay. That's good to practice. Try that where you use the full bow for the first D, then half the bow for each of the next two Ds. You see how I stop the bow in the middle. But we want to get a little bit softer, more lovely sound. We don't want it to sound like that. Ah, ah. Right? We want, it, we want to have a little bit softness here. So what I'm going to do is instead of firmly stopping the bow in between those two up bows, I'm just going to kind of lighten the weight that I'm putting into the string. I just lighten what I'm pressing or putting weight in with my index finger. I'm lightening that weight. And that's honestly all I need to just get a little bit of space in between those two up bows. Do you hear how that has a much nicer sound? And it's allowing the string to vibrate in between those two notes. If I just totally stop the bow, the string is not vibrating anymore. I'm pretty much killing those vibrations. So just lighten the weight in your hand, lift off just a little bit, and that's all you need. Now the bow may come off a little bit, and that's totally fine if it does. If it actually departs the string, just relax and let it land again. Now if you're getting really big departures from the string, it's okay if you can control it, but if it's getting bouncy, something like that, then don't loosen quite as much. Don't lift off so much weight. Keep a little bit of weight in there, just relax the weight. And that will give you that sound that you want. Now to practice this, let's do it with a G major scale, since G major is the key that we're using for minuet number one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do three notes on every note of the scale, and I'm going to do a down, up, up, for each of those notes. So for each pitch in the scale, I'll be doing three notes. So like this. Okay, let's go through the whole scale like that. I'm just gonna play two octaves. I'm gonna go all the way up to the E string. I'm not gonna descend just for time, but I would definitely do it up and down, do this with the arpeggio as well. And I want you to remember high two, high two. High two's on the G and D string, low two, low two on the A and E string. Okay, here we go. Ready, set, go. Talk through each measure of minuet number one. So we're starting off on a D. 
it's very important to make sure that note is in tune before you start. So don't be afraid to lightly build up to the third finger. That way you know you're in tune. All right, so we've already talked about the first measure, how it's just three Ds with our hooked bowing. You're gonna see that repeated a lot. But let's move on to measure number two. And what I want to highlight, highlight to you is the last two notes of that measure, the B to the G. You want to make sure you're leaving your first finger down as you reach over for the third finger. That first finger will act like an anchor. Moving on to measure three, here's our hooked bowing again, but now we've got different notes. We've got a down bow on an A, then an up, up on the D and C. Here you want to make sure when you're putting the third finger down on the D, go ahead and plop all your fingers down. It doesn't matter if they're in the right place. I want you to focus on getting the third finger in the right place and your first finger in the right place. Okay, The two doesn't matter because when you lift off your third finger, that's when you're going to scoot your second finger down next to the first finger right before you play the note. So. See how I've put my two down? It's not in the right place. There's a space right there, but I'm going to scoot it back really quickly. Okay, do you see how I can really quickly adjust to get that note in tune? All right, measure four, we just got a half note and an A. But moving on to measure five can be a little tricky because we're going from an open A to third finger with all of our fingers down. Do the same thing, plop them all down. Focus on the one and the three. Those are the, your anchor points, okay? And just practice that. I would practice going open three and then test your one. Make sure your one is in tune. Or you can do it the opposite way. You can do it open one, three. Just want you to focus on those anchor points. So now for measure five, we'll play all, all, put all the fingers down for the three. And now here, scoot that two back close to one before you play it. Notice when I put the three down on the D string, that last note, I put all the fingers down. Now here's a very important part going in between measure five and six. I want you to keep that third finger down and reach over to the A string with your fourth finger to play the E. That's going to give you an anchor. It's going to help you find that fourth finger. Don't try to do that with an open E. Definitely do that one with a four. Now I'm going to drop my fingers down and the eighth notes are actually the same as the measure before. It's just two, one, open three, right? Don't let that fourth finger bring your two up. Scoot your two down right before you play it. Remember, I drop all my fingers down when I put down a three. Then measure seven, we've got an F sharp here. This one's important because it's our first high two. You're probably going to play that too low. If you don't, congratulations, because most people always play that too low because it's the first high two that they've had. So really, you've already got your third finger down. Scoot that two up right next to third finger. <laughs> really want those G's in tune. That's what the whole song revolves around. Now sometimes I do the repeats in the play along track. I don't just for time and generally honestly when I'm playing through this I'll play through it without the repeats and then I might just repeat the whole song. But if you're going to do the repeat you do need to do a bow lift. You need to lift up your bow to start again on a down bow. <laughs> You've got to do it pretty quick. I kind of cheat by lifting my bow off like the last half beat of the measure to give me time to go back around to the down bow. But if you're continuing on and going on to measure nine, I actually don't do a bow lift. And on measure nine, I do an up bow for that beat. I don't do a down bow, I do an up bow. This works really well because in measure eight, that G was on a down bow. Voila, you are at the tip. Just pivot over to the next string, and this is going to help you play this part really softly, which it is notated to play it softly. So up bow on the B. Keep your first finger down and reach for fourth finger. Okay, And you can go ahead and plop all your other fingers down. 
Now we've got a C sharp. This one will tend to be too low because you've been playing it as a C natural. So use your first finger as a reference point. Remember the second C sharp in measure 10 is also sharp. That sharp symbol lasts for the whole measure. All right, so we've got... Moving on to measure 11, just three quarter notes. I do open E for measure 12. As you're going down, remember, plop the three down, plop all the fingers down with it. There's a C sharp, so scoot it up right next to your third finger. Make sure it's high enough. And then measure 13. Measure 13 and 14 are actually the exact same note, or the same finger numbers as measure five and six. We're just on a different string. We're on the A and E string. So all the same rules and tips apply. You're gonna put down one, two, and three. Scoot the two down next to the one for the low two. Leave that third finger down, reach for four. That note should ring too. It's part of the G arpeggio, G, B, D. So let it ring. Then scoot way down for this low two. Measure 15, you've got a C sharp. Leave the three down, scoot the two up next to it. Place the three right next to the two. Okay. Moving on, this part is soft at measure 17. So we're also gonna have some C naturals again. So make these really low, you just had them high. So you gotta really think about it when you're switching back and forth. So measure 17, low two. Here's this tricky part again, one to three. Leave the one down and reach over for three. And then here is a tricky part in between 18 and 19. You've got a G to a C. So this is what your hand should look like while you're playing the G. The last note in measure 18. You should have that third finger down and you should also have the one down on the A string. It's gonna make it really easy to put your C natural right next to the one. It's a big stretch, feel it widening your knuckles right here. It's a big stretch. Reach back for the two, and it should be in tune. Reach, reach. Okay, then you can remove your three. Got that. And then does the last line look familiar? It should, it's the exact same as the second line, okay? learned the whole song. All right, let's try. If you want to learn what to do with your bow to bring out that beautiful, lovely sound, if you need more rhythm help, or if you want more help and tips with what to do with the musicality, the phrasing, and the dynamics, I've got all of that covered. And you can sign up for a free trial to my online membership and you'll get access to the complete lesson on Minuet Number 1, as well as tutorials on every song in the Suzuki Book 1 and the Suzuki Book 2, along with all of my courses. So try it out. You can sign up for a free trial. And again, the link will be in the description below. While you're here, you can also check out that video or maybe that video and have fun practicing.